Chairperson Judge Maya represents an unblemished, incorruptible, a dignified character, a person who is deeply knowledgeable and understands South African law, having proven her worth as a legal expert. It is both astounding and yet sadly unsurprising that this government state using this government has failed to recognize her due to her political interference. Re regrettably, women are still perceived but not really heard regardless of the significant work that they have been promoting within the profession. Moreover, the continued perse perse persecution of advocate Mkobani using state resources should induce a sense of discomfort in this parliament. Black female lawyers make up to 20% of the workforce in law, indicating a significant underrepresentation they face in the sector. Even those who have managed to enter the profession are finding it difficult to thrive. Black Female LLB graduates are struggling to secure articles and even privileges. You know, some black lawyers are still not taking their maternity leave as we speak because they understand when you take maternity leave, you're seen as not being productive. You're seen as not contributing to the status quo. You're seen as being lazy. And in fact, in 2023, we should not be facing such instances. That is because most black female lawyers absorbed into the private sector and the private sector views them as such. So we should actually look at ourselves as government in South Africa and see how we view black lawyers and how we assimilate them into our structures and make sure that we give them capacity enough to understand the work that they do and understand how valuable they are in this country. Most black lawyers in this country are sexually exploited by black senior advocates, by black senior judges, by black senior magistrates in this country in 2023. And that is a fact. The state, it seems, is mainly paying lip service to the empowerment of black legal practitioners, which is an even greater issue for women. Chapters in black lawyers are still grossly underrepresented. And the government really briefs black lawyer firms, especially those run by black women. We frequently hear about cases of women in the legal profession who become victimized while trying to establish a foothold. In a country with progressive laws and policies, such as the recently passed three GBV bills, one would presume that women in law would be instrumental in overseeing these courts. However, this is not the case. In a country grappling with severe social dysfunction, crime, and laws directed against women, should not the legal profession strive to place women at the forefront of restoring these issues? Should we not be the ones who are judging these cases? Should we not be the ones overseeing these cases? Should we not be the ones making sure that the perpetrators are seen to book? It is, dishearten it is heartening, however, to see the number of black women who have qualified as advocates, as lawyers, as judges, as magistrates, and more. We would like to assure them that their work does not go unnoticed. But in 2023, should we still be battling for the rights that should be inherently granted to us? Chairperson, we acknowledge trade bases such as Desiree Pfinger, the first black attorney to be admitted. Their work has not been in vain. There are numerous challenges confronting black female lawyers in our country, and these must be prioritized if we want to establish a capable and fair justice system in South Africa. Women should never be viewed as proxies 